The removal of an indwelling Foley catheter is a task that can be completed by a nurse or PCT. This video will demonstrate and explain the proper steps to follow to remove this device safely and efficiently. Before you begin, you will need to gather the necessary supplies. You will need a blue pad, a 10cc syringe, clean gloves, a graduated cylinder, alcohol prep pads, and moist towelettes or a pack of bath wipes. With the graduated cylinder, empty the Foley bag of any urine prior to removing the catheter. Take note of the amount so you can document it in the EMR when this process is complete. Now move to the stat lock. Free the catheter from the stat lock by pinching the clasp and lifting up. Remove the stat lock from the patient's leg at this time. The easiest way to do this is by using alcohol prep pads. Take a pad and begin to rub it around the edges of the stat lock. The alcohol will help to neutralize the adhesive of this device. You should be able to easily peel up a side of the stat lock and then continue to rub the pad where the device is still attached to the skin. It will easily release its hold on the skin as you continue to rub the alcohol in this manner. This method of removal is significantly less painful for the patient and it all but eliminates the risk of any damage being done to the skin that could occur if the device were quickly ripped off like a band-aid. Place the blue pad under the patient to protect the linens from any leakage during this procedure. It's now time to move to the Foley. The Foley catheter is held in place inside the body by a balloon that is inflated with water upon insertion. If the catheter is pulled at any point, the inflated balloon will stop it from being removed, although the patient will feel pressure and pain if this happens. In order to safely remove the Foley, the balloon will need to be deflated. Where the catheter tubing ends and the drainage tubing begins, there is a Y junction. The port at this location is connected to the balloon. Around the port is a colored ring with some writing on it. Read it to ensure that you know how much fluid should be in the balloon. The standard Foley catheters supplied in the unit pod rooms have a 10cc balloon, but larger or smaller catheters that are needed in some specific situations may have larger or smaller balloons, and it is important that all water be emptied from the balloon prior to removal or damage to the urinary tract will occur. Having verified that this is a 10cc balloon, take a standard 10cc syringe. This port is not the regular screw-in style port that is usually seen when standard syringes are used, so just push the syringe onto the port. Water may start to fill the syringe as soon as the port is accessed, but likely the seal will need to be broken in the syringe first, so gently pull back on the plunger until you feel that plunger pop and loosen its grip on the syringe. Then let go of the plunger. The pressure from the balloon will push the water out of it and into the syringe without any need for you to pull back on the plunger. This will take roughly 30 seconds. You should not pull back forcibly on the plunger to drain the balloon quickly. Yes, it will probably empty the balloon faster, but there are a couple of problems with this approach. First, there is a chance that the negative pressure will collapse the Foley tubing and the balloon will not be able to deflate. But more importantly, there is the possibility that the rapid deflation of the balloon will cause damage to tissue. When the balloon is inflated, it causes microfissures into the material. And when the balloon is forced to collapse quickly, and if it is in contact with tissue, the equally fast collapse of those microfissures can latch onto tissue and cause irritation and damage. It is always safer to take a few extra seconds to allow the positive pressure from the balloon to fill the syringe than to apply negative pressure from the syringe to force the balloon to empty quickly. When the appropriate amount of fluid has been removed, just to ensure that the balloon is empty, attach another empty syringe to the port and make sure nothing else comes out of that balloon. If any fluid is left in the balloon when you attempt to remove the catheter, there is potential to cause significant damage to the urethra. With the balloon completely emptied, it is time to remove the catheter. Tell your patient that they will likely feel some discomfort during removal. Then have the patient take a deep breath and exhale. This helps relax the pelvic muscles and makes removal smoother and less painful. After exhaling, slowly and smoothly pull the catheter back to remove it from the patient. If at any point you feel resistance while removing the catheter, stop and seek assistance from the appropriate practitioner. Do not risk causing damage to the patient by forcing the catheter out. This could lead to trauma, bleeding, and scar tissue formation that can lead to urinary stricture. Or it could cause catheter rupture, which would require immediate intervention. When the catheter has been removed, if your patient is able to perform pericare on their own, provide them with the towelettes or bath wipes to do so at this point. If they are not able to do this, at this time, perform pericare on the patient. After removing a Foley catheter, take the time to do some patient teaching about what to expect after having a catheter. Over the next 48 hours, they may experience incontinence, urgency, frequency, dysuria, or urinary retention. If these things do occur in this time frame, please inform your nurse, but these are not abnormal after Foley removal. If they continue to occur after the 48-hour window, the patient may need to be assessed by an appropriate clinician.